So, VR chat now supports hand tracking. While I don't necessarily think that it's easier for navigation, it does allow for more expressive hands and it's a pretty interesting experiment. In this video, I'll show you how to set this up using either something like a Quest headset or the Leap Motion 2. But before I start, a few crucial points. This method is meant to work with the Steam version of VR chat. As of this, Oops, oh no. As of this video, you need to be in the public open beta of VR chat. You should also know that using the Quest is a little bit more hassle-free, requires less programs that you're gonna have to install. However, the Leap Motion 2 is still performing surprisingly well, and I don't wanna discourage you from trying it, especially if you already have a PC VR headset and a Leap Motion 2 lying around and you just really, really, really wanna get hand tracking for some reason. Let's start off with the Quest setup because it's the shortest and the simplest. First, make sure hand tracking is enabled in your Quest settings by going to Settings, Movement Tracking, Enable Hand and Body Tracking, as well as any of the others depending on your preferences. I have mine set so that when I tap my controllers together twice, it'll switch over to hand tracking, which will be useful for turning them off once in VR chat. Make sure you're using Virtual Desktop to connect your Quest to your PC. Buy the app for Quest and install the streamer client on your PC. With the streamer client on your PC open and running, launch virtual desktop in your headset and click the left round button on your controller to access the settings. Go to streaming, then enable forward tracking data to PC. Launch Steam VR through virtual desktop, then launch VR chat, and you're good to go. Now for those wanting to try the Leap Motion 2, here's what you'll need. I'm using a Valve Index because it's just what I have and it's easier to plug the Leap Motion in thanks to its frunk. First, of course, make sure you have a Leap Motion 2, which you can find from their store or through my affiliate link in the description. You'll also need a mount to get it on your headset. It's a little 3D printed mount with a sticky back that you can purchase separately. I haven't seen any printable files out there if you want to print one yourself, but if anyone has found a link to one, throw it up in the comments. Buy yourself a USB-C female to standard USB male adapter, a really short one. For comfort, so you don't have cables dangling everywhere, you may also want to find as short of a USB-C to USB-C cable as you can find. This one I found that I'll add to the kit was only $5. There's shorter, but for some reason the shorter ones are like $12, so just see what you can find. With the mount attached to your headset, plug everything in. Download the latest version of Ultraleap Hyperion on Ultraleap's website, install it, and open up the control panel to just check and make sure that your Leap Motion 2 is actually being detected. Occasionally, I'll have issues where the Leap Motion isn't detected by the software. Either rotate the USB-C cable on the adapter side the other way, make sure Steam VR is detecting your headset, or worst case, try restarting your computer. Next, download Driver Leap from GitHub, extract the contents into your Steam VR drivers folder. In your Steam config folder, find a file named steamvr.vr settings and open it with Notepad. In the Steam VR section of this Notepad, add a line that says activate multiple drivers true. I'll also add this to the description for you so you can just copy and paste it. Now launch Steam VR. If you installed the driver properly, you should see your Leap Motion appear in Steam VR like this, and Driver Leap's menu should also pop up on your desktop. If you want to remove the overlays over your hands when you're in game, you can always do this from the overlays section by disabling show overlays. Now let's launch VR Chat. It may take some getting used to on how things work. By default, left thumb and index pinch opens the menu. Left thumb and middle finger acts as your movement if you hold and drag slowly, and a regular pinch, but pretty quick, acts like a trigger button to select things. There's various hand tracking settings you can mess with in both Driver Leap and VR Chat's hand tracking settings. I won't go over that in this video since a lot of it's really personal preference, but at least know that they do exist for you to play around with. And there you have it, whether you're using the Quest or the Leap Motion 2, you can now experience hand tracking in VR Chat. Give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you in the next one.